Hi, welcome to the last session of Auditing 304, Session 10, Audit Reporting. I hope you remember the phases of auditing. This was the key part of the phase, phase 5. The last phase of the auditing process is audit reporting. This phase requires the auditor to report findings and opinion on the financial statement. The audit report is effectively the means by which auditors communicate satisfaction of or the satisfaction with their accounts to shareholders. This session seeks to expose students to the nature and the nature of audit reports and the types of audit reports. At the end of the session, we expect students to be able to explain the nature of audit reports, outline the types of audit reports, discuss forming the audit opinion on financial statement, describe the standard format of audit report, discuss on qualified and qualified audit report. The session Outline is as follows, audit reporting, types of audit report, basis of opinion, and format of audit report. Read chapter 9 of the key recommended test, Audit and Assurance Services in Ghana by Bedi. The slides too will be made available and other auditing and assurance textbooks available to you on audit reporting to appreciate this part very well. Audit reporting. The auditor's report should contain a clear expression of the auditor's opinion on the financial statement. The objective of an audit of financial statement is to enable the auditor to express an opinion whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. Unless required by law or regulation to the use of different wording, the auditor's opinion on a complete set of general purpose financial statements prepared in accordance with a financial reporting framework that is designed to achieve fair presentation states whether the financial statements give a true and fair view or are presented fairly in all material respects in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. What are then the benefits of audit report? The audit report provides the reader with the opinion of the auditor on the report on the various assertions made by management when they prepare the financial statement. It is a major means of communication between auditors and readers or interested parties or users of the financial statement. It also gives an indication of that indication that the financial statement has been audited and it provides assurance to interested parties or stakeholders of the financial statement. There are types of audit reports and we may want to look at them. Unqualified, which can also be known as unmodified audit report. And the second one is qualified or modified audit report. Let's take them one by one and appreciate what they are and at what circumstance such report can be issued. The first one we want to look at is the unqualified or unmodified audit report. The unqualified report is the audit report which auditors issue if the financial statement in all respect complies with the applicable reporting framework. This report, therefore, is issued if the auditor's evidence shows that the financial statement gives a true and fair view without any reservations. What are the conditions for standard unqualified audit report? When we say that all financial statements are included, that is all the various components that makes a financial statement has been included in the financial statement being audited, applicable standards have been followed in all respects on the engagement. Sufficient evidence has been accumulated by the auditor to conclude that applicable standards of field work has been or have been met. The financial statements are presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. There are no circumstances requiring the addition of or an explanatory paragraph or modification of the wording of the report. And that would then mean that you as an auditor can go ahead and issue an unqualified or an unmodified report. What are the kinds of unqualified report? We have the normal one, the general one, that shows that everything is true and fair. And we have unqualified report, but with a paragraph on emphasis of matter, which can be limitation of scope or on an inherent uncertainty, loss of receipt books, etc. The second type of report is the qualified report or the modified report. The qualified report is the audit report which auditors issue if the financial statement do not comply in all material respects 
with the applicable reporting framework. Auditors issue such reports if the financial statement show any other view other than only true and fair. Now, for us to know the various types of qualified report, let's look at this table. We have the first column, reasons, the second, material, and the third, perverse. And then the first row we have, first row on the first column we have limitation of scope, and the second row we have disagreement. These are the things we are going to use to help us understand this matrix, this table. We're going to use material and perverse, and we're going to use limitation of scope and disagreement. So we're saying that limitation of scope, that is inability to carry out audit procedures, perhaps due to lack of accounting records or information and explanation from management. And disagreement is where auditors disagree with certain assertions or certain statements or representation by management, which can be on inappropriate accounting procedure, procedures or policies regarding fast and amount of such as bad debt, regarding the extent of disclosure of facts and amounts, regarding compliance with legislation or other requirements. We are going to put these two key points, limitation of scope and disagreement with material and perverse, which will help us to know the type of qualified report to issue at each circumstance. So let's start. One, limitation of scope. That is the auditor, the inability to carry out all these procedures. If this inability is, is considered material, then the type of audit report that can be issued is a set for. That is, the auditor will issue an a set for qualified report if the matter due to limitation of scope cannot be audited as material. But if it's material and also pervasive, that is, the possibility of it occurring is so assured, then the auditor will issue a disclaimer of opinion. That is, the auditor will issue a disclaimer of opinion if the matter due to limitation of scope can be audited as material, cannot be audited as material and pervasive. So, the limitation of scope, when it's just material, the auditor will issue a qualified report, except for. But if it's material and pervasive, then limitation of scope, the auditor will, auditor will issue a disclaimer of opinion. On disagreement, if the auditor disagrees with management on several issues and the issue they disagree on is material, only material, then the auditor will go ahead and issue an asset for qualified audit report. But if it's material and pervasive, then the auditor will issue an adverse report, opinion, if the matter due to disagreement is material and pervasive. So for you to know the type of report to issue under qualified, you have to consider limitation of scope as against material and pervasiveness. Or this, the, if the issue is due to disagreement, then you consider this disagreement with material issues or pervasiveness. That will help you to know whether the report, which is a qualified report, will be a set for or will be a disclaimer or be adverse opinion. Now let's, with this, look at the basis of opinion. The auditor must evaluate the conclusions drawn from the audit evidence obtained as the basis for forming an opinion on the financial statement. I hope you have not forgotten this. When we were discussing evidence, we were looking at sufficient and appropriate evidence, and that serves the basis for auditor's opinion. Whether the financial statement taken as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether the financial statement give a true and fair view or are presented fairly in all material respect in accordance with the applicable financial report and framework will depend on the evidence gathered. Compliance with reporting framework. The accounting policies selected and applied are consistent with the financial reporting framework and are appropriate in the circumstance. The accounting estimates made by management are reasonable in all circumstances. The information presented in the financial statement, including accounting policies, is relevant, reliable, and comparable, and understandable as well. The financial statement therefore provides sufficient disclosures to enable users to understand the effect of material transactions and events on the information conveyed 
in a financial statement. For example, in the case of financial statement prepared in accordance with international financial reporting standards, the entity's financial position, financial performance, and cash flow. This, when achieved, we're saying that there is compliance with what? Financial reporting framework. Now let's try and see the format of audit report. Hey, they are so close to you. Per the company's code 1963, at 179, Shadow Fitch give us the very the format of the audit report. And then the international standards on audit, which Ghana subscribe to, gives us a perfect standard to work with. So to understand and to see the main format and the various components of the report, we have to pay attention to the international standards on auditing and the companies called Ghana, specifically Shadow. Now let's try to look at the various sections of a standard audit report. It has a, a title, needs address, C, introductory paragraph, management representative, responsibility for the financial statement, auditor's responsibility, basis of opinion, and then followed by the auditor's opinion, other reporting responsibilities, auditor's signature, name and institute of chartered accountants, Ghana membership number, Date of the auditor's report and auditor's address. Very, very important. So you can consult the various dailies and other annual reports to look at the way audit reports are written as a sample for you so that you'll be able to always identify the various sessions of a standard audit report. With this, we say thank you for being with us for all the 10 sessions of Auditing 304. Thank you. And if, if there are any questions, I'll be available on Sakai to help you out. All the best.